everybody. Whiskey, you know. Another one of your bad ideas. This, this is a bad idea because I'm drinking what you paid for. Hello, everybody. Still. I was supposed to say that different, wasn't I? Hello, everybody. Yeah, Can I lean in? Because that wasn't. Funny. Was that better, Creepy. Rob? Did you? No, like that it one? was no? absolutely not better. <laughs> It was a lot of things, uh, but better one wasn't one. Wasn't it? Welcome to Whiskey at Work. It's Rob and it's me, Mark, and here we are drinking. And again. we're back. It's like we never left. It kind of feels that way Except a little you bit. You had a wardrobe. You had a wardrobe change. Don't give away our secret. Uh, today it's all about the great state again, of North Dakota. I don't know if you can see. Or the, the state of North Dakota. The great state of North Dakota. I'm, I'm North, I even have, I have the North Dakota sweater and, of course, North Dakota recording artist, Brian Lowry. <laughs> You're welcome, Brian. That's a free, that one's on me, buddy. You can have that, okay? Yeah, just wait till it, he takes his turn. It's going to be a lot different <laughs> yeah. oh, than I that know. shirt. There's going to be, there's going to be something with, with, with his buns. <laughs> what this I'm is get. not his buns that I'd be worried about. Uh, yes, we're back with Proof Artisan Distillers. Uh, again, Joel and Jay up there, those guys, uh, those guys have just been amazing uh, to us and for us. And, and, and we're hoping to pay them on. back if you guys want to vote and try to call somebody and get their product down here. Yeah. Call, call every distributor you know and exactly. make, them, you're, make you're, them sign these guys. You're not going to be disappointed in the product they made. Last week, we talked about uh, Motorhead, the Ace of Spades bourbon uh, from the band. It's <laughs> last week. Yeah, last week is when sure. that was. It was... It seemed like so much... Theater of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like a lot less time has passed. Uh, we have... Uh, we've had Crooked Furrow... In the past, and we've talked about it before on, on, on some episodes. We've had the double barrel. We've had the single barrel. Yes. We've had the motorhead. Right. And, so, now, and now this now humdinger a here. Bottled in Bond from Crooked Furrow. And we're going we're gonna to get into this one here shortly because this surprised both of us. I this mean, one, visually I... on our faces, <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a surprise, okay? This but is really interesting. For people that don't understand what bottled and bond means, I thought it'd be kind of fun to to talk about that a little bit because you'll see it uh, in the liquor stores right now. Very, I mean, Jack Daniels has done it. Uh, Jim Beam has yeah, done it. Yeah, we haven't had the Jack Daniels bottled and bond that we were promised. That's not the. That, that's totally different from the ten year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you'll see this if you go into some liquor stores, and you may wonder what does that mean. Right? Well... Or you may just buy it and drink it and not give a crap what it means. That's, that's very true. One of the best bottled and bonds I've ever had was the Henry McKenna and that $17 bottle of Evan Williams that's bottled and bond that you can find anywhere. Those are both fantastic. Remember, yeah. the, remember the McKenna? That was very early on. I remember. Really. That was what the, one of the first bottles you bought when I bought that chocolate malt. Oh, Woodford, that's right. I think. Yeah. The one where you got home and thought, damn, that was a lot that of money. That was a lot of money. <laughs> On this bottle of Dang whiskey. It. Um, Wasn't my favorite. But there's a very good reason why whiskey had to do this whole bottled and bond. Because back in the day, whiskey was not good. Mostly. Well, right? I think that's a matter of where you were getting it and who you were getting it from. I mean, I think the distillers were doing their part in creating a quality product, but back then it was sold in barrels. So right. the bar owner at the OK at Corral. The old lazy saloon. Could, yeah. could, you know, <laughs> way to go all country on <laughs> yeah. Sorry, us. I didn't mean to. <laughs> but the, he could cut it with other stuff mm -hmm. and he, to, extend, to extend it. It would you know, dilute the proof and, and turpentine. you could add turpentine yeah. or formaldehyde or wood shavings. Or anything to make the just sale. Anything to, anything to, you know, make that flavor. Yeah. <laughs> to make what was already not very good taste not right. very well, gooder? I, I don't know. There, some of it or to was, extend it, really. Some, some of it was they weren't even buying whiskey to do that. They would buy vodka and then try to make oh. it taste or, or some clear spirit that would they add coloring to it and then the flavoring to give it that whiskey bite and it would to right. make to make cheaper vodka 
tastes like whiskey. And there were also <laughs> what's called rectifiers, a hell of a which, is kind of, which is kind of what you were referencing. There were the distillers and the rectifiers. And the rectifiers were the ones that were kind of muddling Shame. it all up. Yeah, and making it terrible. And then one very big name appeared throughout all of this. Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr., Popped up. I couldn't remember if it was EJ or EH. E. E.H. E.H. Taylor. I, I, I did. Yes. I bought one of those bottles. Well, that's a good bottle here, to buy here recently that I'm super stoked to try. And you'll you'll see hit that bottle in some liquor stores, and you'll know it best as what is now Buffalo Trace. That's what the E.H. Taylor Jr. His whole distillery and brand turned into eventually. So you're obviously very familiar yeah, with that. Yeah, if you can find Buffalo Trace, let us know because it's getting harder <laughs> Still, and harder to find. Exactly. Um, it's almost being allocated at this point. The straight whiskey distillers said, look, we need some sort of rule here because these rectifiers are, are ruining everything. So the government stepped in and said, all right, we'll help. We're going to help. One of the only <laughs> times the government, what the government does well, is it steps in and helps You know, people. but it, if the government is going to help, I'm glad that it helped with whiskey. Okay. <laughs> well, so far. <laughs> but it's, exactly. Uh, so really, all bottled and bond means is that it has to be produced by the same distiller at the same distillery during the same distilling season. Has to age minimum four years and has to go into the bottle at 100 proof. And then it sits. The only in a, thing that can be added is pure water. Right. And then it sits in the in the a special area that the distiller has a key for, and the government has a key for. Right. What did you call it? What was the second lock on there? Uh, well, back before the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897, they actually had bonded warehouses, and they were used by the government to for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. And they had a government agent called the gauger who would. Who would go in and... That's going to be my new gamer tag. Gager, not, Gager. not on the swallow. <laughs> no, way. <laughs> you know, when you're playing against a bunch of 12-year-olds, <laughs> on the swallow is not something uh -huh. you want. <laughs> Screamed it it might you, distract them, though. It could, sure, sure. Anyway. But sorry. anyway, the, thanks. <laughs> the gauger's job back then was to go in and measure the actual amount of whiskey left in the barrel because they were the distillers were want, not wanting to get charged for loss they weren't the evaporation the absorption into the wood so if you put in you know 60 gallons in a barrel and you lose five gallons of it they only wanted to be taxed for oh that makes sense gallons. sure um but nowadays I, I don't think bottled and bond really doesn't after prohibition was done i think everybody kind of got together and said look you know, let's 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 not make a crappy product. Let's let's follow some rules and make it good. So, there, I don't know if is there a Jim Beam joke. There <laughs> oh, quit! Oh, that was me. Quit. Sorry, it's not my. Um, but I don't think bottled and bond is really. It's not a thing anymore. Well, it's still a thing, obviously. Right, they're, but but there's no there's it. no reason for it anymore. Let's put it that way. No, I'm sure there's enough government help and oversight and sure. taxation that you probably don't need to be bottled and bond, but it is one more product that a lot of distilleries are putting out there. Well, and if, if, if a distillery is going to put out a crappy product anyway, you're not going to drink it. So yeah, and it doesn't, won't matter if it's bottled and bond. Exactly. Or not. That's, that's 100%. That's what percent. you're saying. Right? So I think they just kind of do it as a throwback, you know, to the days. A little, little nod. To yeah, the, to, to E.H. Taylor and the boys. That hey, you know, <laughs> thank you for making for making whiskey taste good. So that's kind of the, the the brief history of bottled and bond. It's kind of interesting. So you don't say you never learn anything. From yeah, us. sometimes we can teach yourself. And and, and, and even if this, we just learned it ourselves a few minutes ago. In this instance, you can go ahead and Google what we said, and it's going to be the exact same thing that we just said because that's what we did. So, <laughs> which this, is mostly what we do. Right. See us caramely and <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, this is the uh, Crook and Furrow, their version of the Bottled and Bond. And here's what makes this so unbelievably unique. They followed all the rules, four years, 100 proof, sat, you know, the government sat under the watchful eye. Sat in bourbon barrel for four years, yep. But they have a gin that they make too, some different gins yep. that they make. What they did was they took this four-year aged bourbon and finished it in their Gin barrels. I think what they did was, was they had the 
their bourbon barrels, and then they aged gin in it for a year. Oh, I see. And then okay. they turned around once the gin was done and put the bourbon back in their now used gin barrels. Right. And it gives it an incredibly unique flavor. Oh, boy. The smell on it instantly. It smells super sweet. Exactly. Super, and, super, and if you didn't know, you might have thought that you just took a sniff of a gin. It, it's, it's, it's different than their, than their double barrel for sure. I mean, it's got that 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 pine fresh, you know. It's almost it's almost minty in a it way. It is. It is a little bit. It's it's definitely got a gin hint to it. Oh, I don't know. I, it, it might be more of a gin chin slap because <laughs> because <laughs> there's 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 a it's it's noticeable. There's no hint oh, absolutely. to it. I don't think it's. Uh, You're not a big gin guy, though. I'm right? I'm not, but. I mean, I can appreciate this for what it is, you know. I really can. This is, you know, a little tonic and a boy. I wonder. Of lime might be damn good with this thing. If you, oh, that's what we should. Little. Don't we have some tonic across the hall there? We might. We got a, We haven't looked in that fridge in <laughs> a year and a half. We probably have some good stuff in there. There might be some tonic in there, actually. Wow, this. I know, it's been a long time since we've both been really surprised, I think, by something that we've tasted. I think, this... I, think I like it a little more than you, mm-hmm. just because I enjoy gin. And by no means do I not like it. Damn right you do. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just, just because it's got the, the, the gin hint to it's, it. Yeah, it's just a little different. And I, if you can find it anywhere, North Dakota, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in Rhode Island for Rhode Island reason. Rhode Island or Arizona. There, sure. Um, I would buy a bottle of this yeah. just for the uniqueness of it, if nothing else. To have three or four friends sitting around and trying it, you guys are, it's, it's going to be an interesting conversation. You don't have but, to share. No. Screw them. Well, Rob rarely does. You should see the collection he has that he only shares when I'm like, hey, Rob, can we do that one for whiskey at work? Have I ever said no? Have you ever said no? I don't think you have yet, have you? The birthday bourbon might be. Yeah, the one that's so the far. one. You son of a. You don't think you will? Thanks, Dan. What if we just have? A, what if we just have a little tiny? Once you open it, if I just have a little. I mean, just once just, I open it, it'll. Yeah, yeah. just this little uh, bit, maybe. We'll see. Can I talk you into that? Well, if I open it, you'll be the first one I share it with. Oh man, oh, no. I'd hug you if I didn't hate hugging. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> well, after, after stealing your scotch, I feel a little. I probably owe you at sure. least that. Well, again, to proof artists and distillers up in Fargo, North Dakota, that make the excellent uh, Double Barrel Crooked Furrow, which is one of our all-time favorite bourbons, and then this very unique uh, bottled and bond that they gave us. Thank and, you guys very much. And they still much. have the cool they uh, do. shit bottle. The bottle design. is way cool. Uh, Mountain West Whiskey Festival, March 5th. It's not a sticker. The <laughs> well, We had a whole argument <laughs> on what this was back here. Etched, a sticker, or... I think it's just actually printed. Or on printed. Bottom. All right. Well, that's, we're not, not going to bore know. anybody with that conversation. You already bored me enough with it. MountainWestWhiskeyFestival.com is where you can get tickets. The Platinums are gone. The VIPs are getting close to being gone. Uh, but general admission are still available, and every single price point is worth it for this event. So we Special were... shout out to Timmons Market for being our people, yes. as well as being the, the uh, sponsor of Whiskey Fest. And I don't think we have yet to... Get Dan a taste of this. Dan needs to come You've in. You've got and try to come this. down, buddy, because before this... I before I take it home, <laughs> I want I really want his opinion on what he's going to think of this. So thank you so much for hanging out with us again, and uh, I think we're going to be back next week, and we're going to be talking beer whiskey. I still have I still don't understand why all of the good whiskey comes from me and all of the that stuff comes from you. Well, I guess we'll see you next week. This better be good. Whatever, Rob. It better be better than their beer, I swear to God.